everyone welcome back to biblio fitness hope everyone had a great day um i had a uh fantastic night i went to a concert last evening and um i'm a little surprised that my voice is not as uh shot and hoarse as uh, i thought it was gonna be um it was a fantastic concert i haven't gone to a heavy metal concert in quite some time and it was uh, very enjoyable <laughs> to say the least just to uh headbang and um I lip, it lip. Uh, <laughs> uh, but whatever. Uh, today is sponsored by. Uh, well, not officially, but the reason I'm kind of still like kind of awake is because I did take a nap, and I have been drinking Celsius because uh, there's just no way in hell that I would be awake right now. But besides the point. Well, that uh, enough for that today. So today, um, I wanted to continue to talk about uh, the dawn of the day and uh, morality, you know, um, diving into this whole complex uh, uh, faculty or system and shit like that. Because I, I was thinking about something in my head because I've been listening to a podcast uh, on um, YouTube um, about, you know, the, the fall of Rome and, 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 and stuff like that. And then, you know, and a lot of the stuff that I've been learning from Nietzsche has really been starting to stake. Um, I don't know if anyone else goes through this, but like you have a read and then you like, you have those moments of doubt, like, do I really remember anything? But then when you start reading and when you start talking, everything starts popping up in your head. Um, but you know, I was listening to this podcast and clearly my mind has been, uh, <laughs> changing obviously uh, because they were talking about the fall of Rome and you know the decadence that ensued and, and stuff like that and one thing that really started to pop in my head was um, something that Nietzsche talks about was you know what is morality which is a justification for whatever drives or whatever anger you may have you know as I was saying that the last episode is that uh, Christianity, even Buddhism and stuff like that, it, or pessimism. It's it's straight up pessimism. It's rejection. It's a uh, it's hating the world, right? It's a rejection of how nature is and what it is. And we have these different, um, you know, with these religions and these philosophies, we have different manners. Is how we process and and describe the world around us and nature, right? Um, and the reason I was talking about that is because, you know, you, you we're, I mean, I'm always going to be talking about modern times because what are we reading for except to try to process our, our, our surroundings, right? And you begin to realize that it is our morality that has caused us to be decadent. It is not our, the decadence that has caused us to be weak. It is, it, you know, and that's the whole cause and effect and the causality thing that Nietzsche talks about as well is that we have a confused that people think that we turn bad because of our decadence and it's not the other way around. It's that we are decadent because we're not healthy. And I'm saying like decadence is a symptom and it's not the cause. Um, and, and, and in relation to that, it's like we see around us and we see, um, and I'm about to get this to this point um, when I start reading and once I get some work done over here, uh, is this this contemplative nature that developed with these pessimistic uh, religions such as Christianity, right? It is no longer um, to be a man of action, I suppose you could say. You know, it, it's it's contemplating, right? It's and, and the thing that I go back to Rome is because like you look at Roman um, religion, you look at Roman the way that they were and very very martial very more it's all about prowess and achieving glory and and you know they're not you know exactly unique in that perspective right you know a lot of these nations uh, especially back then when the world was very tough you had to have these sort of religious and these sort of value systems in place in order to get all of civilization behind it you look at the origins of Rome, right? Surrounded on three sides um, in, in the middle of fucking Italy. You have to develop or you have to ascribe and you have to sanctify the, the behaviors that are going to further enhance your survival and your nation's survival, right? That's why they're very martial. You have to have physical and military prowess in order to survive in such a harsh world. 
and and that just even shows you how morals change themselves and how soft we've gotten right it, um you know you look at rome and you know you have march you know the beginning of the campaign season for them and it's named after mars the roman god of war you know um you even the patricians the patrician the aristocrats back then back in the olden days they were a bunch of cocksuckers but damn, you can't say they didn't have balls, bro. Those motherfuckers were out there riding with their horses and shit and cutting people down. Back then, it was brutal. Brutal, right? You know, and you had to develop a morality that brought that even more, like, that put it out there. And that's why you have things such as triumphs and, and how, you know, to be considered a great man, to be considered a great consul and things like that is to have military experience, to, to know to be aware like for people to know that you are ready to go down when you need to go down you're not all talk you're action you're a man of action that's what you need in order to survive in these in this constantly changing and violent world is a man of action not a man of contemplation not a man of too much contemplation right and it has to be uniformity and that was one of the biggest knocks against uh, cicero for example right is that he's a great orator uh, a great orator but no military prowess. That's why he never really was able to get to the levels of power that he thought he probably deserved, maybe. Was because, you know, he was just a man of letters, not a man of, of, of the sword. And that's why I never really, and, and one thing that really sin, sin, uh, uh, signifies the, the the deviation that we have from those previous aspects, from those previous mentalities is how, you know, people say that the pen is mightier than the sword, which is bullshit. Um, people with the pens right after the men with the swords have already done what they did. Um, you know, um, and it's just, it, it's really, I just, look, I don't know how I didn't think about this before. That's why I want to get Nietzsche um, tattered on me. And it, and it just talks about like how back in the day, you know, how harsh the world was. And you had to be a man of action. And you had, you know, you had, you know, Alexander the Great is a fucking amazing example of a warrior king, right? And, you know, a man that even brought fucking scientists and shit to start recording all the, uh, the fauna and the flora and stuff like that that were going rampage into the Persian Empire. A man that was very intelligent but also a man of action a man that was out there in the fucking front ranks and you know you have back then with the phalanxes for example you know a lot of people I, I hear people tell me that i have friends tell me that I'm like oh man those people in the front lines bro they must have sucked those must have been the poor they always send the poor to the front lines and i'm like no actually that's not the case um the people in the front lines that was considered a, a, a honor not the, the poor weren't there the elites were there the big boys the ones that really wanted glory were going to be right in the thick of it and they're like oh but why would you want to do that you're going to die and i'm just like you know that's the contemplate that, that that's another that's another example as to how deviated we become how contemplative we become instead of being men of action right and this call to action um that's uh, uh, such a, a pivotal uh pivotal part of Nietzsche's uh, system or philosophy or whatever because you look at it now and we you know you look at how Rome used to be I love Rome you know Rome was is crazy and it probably didn't it probably survived way longer than it should have but it just but you know it, you see them and it's all about glory and it's all about fucking honor and power and exhibiting power and then you go to now and all we're doing is contemplating. All we're doing is complaining. We just reject the world. We reject everything about us. We think we're terrible people. We think we are pieces of shit. And we're just contemplating. We're just constantly critiquing, constantly looking around the world around us and being completely dissatisfied and disenfranchised with the world. And, and it just shows why we are the way we are now. You know, decadence is not brought about on its own you know we have to be there already and and that's really what it is now bro it's just constant complaining and bitching and moaning you know you have people now that are even saying that science itself is racist and and homophobic and stuff like that you know people make it a ridiculous claim that science has is a form of the patriarchy or something like that that you know that's why they say there's only two genders one in reality there's more um 
It's just continually rejecting who we are and our role in the world and what the world world really is, right? That, you know, we reject so much of it, you know, that we don't, we never really touch the truth, now do we? You know, we don't want the truth. That's why people who, who have shows or put out music or have a medium that talks about truth or tries to get you to get taken in that way are never popular people, you know? They want people to be stupid, you know? And, and, and it's not even the, just the people in power, it's the people around us as well, you know? Not many people, no, not, most people don't want to contemplate the fallacy of their lives, you know? Most people don't want to dive and dig in and realize how uh, how many constructs we have around us and how, you know, we always have these filters on, you know, and, and, it, and, and it, um, just to get to, I mean, another point is, and when I was talking about the morality, right, is cre creating and constructing a morality and a value system that is beneficial for your survival. And back then, you had to create a religion that was focused on warfare and battle and honor in battle and dying in battle because that was the only way you were going to survive and you have to get people to go along with it you have to get people excited and pumped up and you know you had you have Valhalla for for the Norse you know dying in battle being being taken by um by the Valkyries and such um and and then you look at now when you look at Christianity and, and 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 it's the complete opposite, right? Their value systems are for the poor or for the sufferers, the ones that that been suffering, and that's why they call for pity and they call for contemplation because the entirety of Christianity in itself is a rejection of nature and a rejection of what of the beast in man. You know, the beast in man is considered evil. It's considered something that we have to be constantly watching out for ourselves. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, I, I, it's just like it is nowadays. Like a lot of people are Christians, but they're secular Christians, right? And they're so revolted with themselves. They're so revolted with the world. And it just shows in, in the behavior how we're constantly chucking shit out. And we can't, we can't accept anything. We can't agree with anything. And it's like Nietzsche says, like, we can't digest anything. We have such a fucking slow metabolism that we can't deal with it. Like, it just sits on our stomach and makes us want to vomit. And that just does not show a healthy individual, a person that's poor. And a person, a person that is constantly in fear of himself, constantly in fear of his passions or drives and stuff like that. When in the end of the day, morality is nothing more than um, a screening, really, a filtration of your drives and in order for you to be able to sleep at night, right? That's really what these things are at the end of the day. And so for me, I want to go call back to uh, the olden days, the olden morality of fucking battle and honor and and savageness and, and, and conquering, you know? And I feel like a lot of us men dealing with these anxieties now is because we no longer have that call to action. We never, we don't have that drive and that wanting to attain glory, going out to battle and, and attaining glory. And I know I'm romanticizing war and the only people that want war are those who haven't lived through it. Um, I'm not calling for war exactly, but you know, to be a man of action, a man that's willing to conquer, a man that is not, terrified of his instincts but embraces them embraces the bad parts so not even the bad parts i don't even want to us we're bad um but the beast in us right the flaws are jealousies and envies and, and you know the those sort of behaviors that that even the gods in those times had you know it just shows you how much we loved ourselves and loved humanity how much we embrace that animal in us that even our gods had those same behaviors. You had Zeus running around and, you know, being a whore, you know, whore, uh, whoring around and jealousy and malice and anger and all these things and vengeance and will to conquer. These were all synonymous with Greek, Greek mythology and uh, Roman mythology. And, and it's just, um, and then you just look at it now. You know, it's the complete opposite. All about peace and love, and about, uh, an abolition of suffering, and it's just it, it, it's despicable. And I don't want to ascribe to that. Um, 
And that's really why we're in the position we are today. You know, we're weak and pathetic because that's what the morality calls you to be, weak and pathetic. And then people will say it otherwise because they're, mis they're interpreting it in a way that's beneficial for them. So you are just further uh, enhancing my point. You, you are twisting shit that's beneficial for you. It's like people who are Christians and then they're constantly chasing money and want wealth and have big ass houses. And I'm like, what part of you is Christian? But whatever. Uh, people have been <laughs> abusing that fucking Bible since it's in its inception really and you're not really a father of christ you're a follower of paul i mean a peter not paul peter um i think he gets into that in the dawn of day um, it'd be very interesting to see what levels uh, what conceptions he comes up with that i or he came up with he's not a lot um that i has completely flown over my head um but you know it, it's just, uh, it's, it, I just came up with, <laughs> came up with that today. I was making that comparison. Is that we're always, you know, especially now, we're always working or we're seen by the validity of the people around us, right? We're validated by the people around us, whether we have been philanthropists, whether, you know, our greatness is measured of how much we give back. You know, how what have you done for the community? What have you done for your fellow man? And instead of really. Kind of focusing on yourself a little bit more. I feel like a lot of us really do deal with the anxieties because we're constantly having to appease others. And then we look at the values and the systems of others and we can, we can never measure up to them. You know, everyone, you know, we're never satisfied because we don't even fucking know. We're not even aware of ourselves really. And I feel like just focusing the attention on oneself and trying to figure out, okay, well, what is success uh, for me? And that falling into the trap that when you come up with these different, con like with your own morality, you still go under the guise of the prevailing morality. So have you really gone out of it? Um, obviously not, because you're still using the same concepts and the same truths in order to validate your values. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really do, uh, that, I mean, I do want to, if I ever have children, uh, the sons will definitely be given Roman names because I just think even the names are hardcore, they're pretty fucking cool, like Flavius and Trajan and Hadrian, and you have a lot of really amazing names in Rome, um, I like these names are pretty boring now. But that'll be it for today. I kind of want to get to some reading and talk about this. Um, it's very, it, it's really cool. It just shows why we are in the state that we are. You know, we're no longer acting. We're contemplating and we're constantly looking at how terrible we are and just being stuck in this perpetual fear that is Christianity. You know, watching your passions and constantly seeking atonement, constantly seeking forgiveness for one's own existence. Um, it's a pathetic life in the end. So. Um, hope you all had a great day well, or, or have a great day depending on what time you see this um, make some gains today's a rest day for more if not I probably I mean if I had the gym today I would have had to not go you know I was there at the concert for like a good like four hours it was pretty cool I hope you all well I already said it <laughs> um, get to some reading get to some gains until next time peace